uh, and uh, one, two, three, clap. <laughs> that was a really quiet clap. I'm sorry. <laughs> And welcome to We're Not Wizards. Um, this is a, a, another uh, Friends of the Show episode. And this one is going to be called uh, I Know How to Draw. Just ne- I just need some more grey, please. And uh, joining me tonight is... Um, the, it's like award-winning, award-nominated <laughs> writer, video singer person... Uh, Let's not say singer. It's, God. <laughs> it's not going to do that. Um, it's it's Kate Gray. Hello. 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 It's me. Hello. That thing you just said. <laughs> so you are award. You are kind of like award winning, award nominated now, aren't you? Because you've yeah you've won like rising. Is it rising star that you won? Rising star. That's the one. And yes. you're now doing. You're nominated. Your podcast, which is for people who yeah, aren't aware, been... Toku podcast. Yeah, which is you. I'm. I'm. I've got other awards I'm nominated for. It's very exciting. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> um, Humble. Oh, I was nominated for a woman in games. Wim, women in games award. Yeah, because I'm a woman. I did. In games. I was about to say oh, that because yeah. the reason that we do that is usually because um, there's not enough podcasts about board games, and the other the, <laughs> and the other reason we do that is because there's simply not enough pod- podcasts where it's just two guys kind of talking oh, i know right so i wish more people did that <laughs> i just i don't know are you gonna call yourself bob or something like that instead for the duration and we yeah. just hope that people don't notice be like blackadder <laughs> <laughs> what's your name <laughs> <laughs> what's your name it's uh it's bob um bob. so that's me bob <laughs> <laughs> um I, I just you know it's like um We've been we've been talking about this for a little while, and it's finally happening, which is very very good. But tonight we're going to talk about board games, and we're then going to go into possibly the biggest question extravaganza that we have experienced that we are not wizards because we put the shout out for questions, and I don't know it's like another episode of Taku Podcast because the questions mm-hmm. came thick and fast. So hopefully we can get yeah. through them all. But we are here to talk about cardboard. And to talk about cardboard, we have to find out your history with cardboard. So, yes. tell us your history. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's not quite like my history with video games where I know the first game I played. You know, mm. board games were just always just a thing. Mm. I think that's how most people have it. Like, you play Monopoly at Christmas. Mm. Uh, your parents try and distract you by giving you, I don't know, like, mouse trap. Mm-hmm. Uh and all these fiddly little bits yes. to keep you occupied for at least half an hour. Mm-hmm. So I, I played those, and honestly, I think looking at it now, Monopoly is like quite a badly designed game because the first bit is super be slow. Careful, and then the rest be careful! Be careful! Oh. Be careful! Because yeah? a couple of shows ago, we had somebody on that collected Monopoly. Oh my! Yeah, okay. shrink wrapped. I mean, I, I I enjoyed playing it, but. It's a bit like, this is going to sound like such a humble brag. When I play Monopoly and when I play in particular Cluedo, mm. uh, I've got like ways of gaming it that other people don't seem to know. Oh, right. And I think that's maybe because I play video games and I'm like, what's the shortcut to me winning? Um, and I'm not going to tell you my, my strategy. You not even here, tell but, one um, or give us a clue. I mean, even the colours of the streets or the <laughs> first letter uh, or... I, I go for the orange properties and the brown properties, which uh, isn't the best strategy, but people underestimate, particularly the orange ones. Yeah. Um, I try to get the greens, but everyone always wants the greens. Mm. So 
you end up just kind of having one and then someone else has one and someone else has the other one and you're trying to trade and it's just not worth it. It's best to try and get the oranges. Statistically, people land on the oranges most. Have you done research into that? Because I'm, I'm st- I have. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> stations. Um, That's what I'm at. Yeah. Yep, stations. Utilities. Stations I like. Uh, utilities I hate. I think they're mm. not worth like two properties and it's based on a dice roll mm-hmm. too much to chance uh can't be bothered with that um i like the brown properties because you know people can pay them people have just gone past go so they always have at least yeah 200 White. in there but then so, but then you can get them if they get hit on mayfair and then they get cleared out and then they go past go yeah. and they've only got 200 and you've got some hotels yeah. and you can wipe them out again and i've won yep. a lot of games and then that. they hate you and it's great uh so yeah i really like the brown properties uh i think they can be overvalued because people kind of see your strategy and they go all right then i'll I'll give you one of them for one of the green properties and you're like i don't want it that much so it sounds like there's been some serious thought into your general monopoly game that's been put in which is kind of i just want it to be over as soon as possible (laughs) um i i play with like a few of the variant rules like if you land on go you get 400 Really? And uh, free parking, right. you get all the bill money. Yeah, see, this was a question that I specifically asked because um, it was Gary and Aidan who were on um, the show about two, two maybe, is it two episodes ago, three episodes ago, and they yeah. were saying that they went actually down to a Monopoly championship, and I asked the question, wow. what's the official ruling regarding collecting the money when you land on free parking? And they said mm-hmm. that there wasn't. The official mm. rules say that you don't if you're playing in competitions. So there's people okay. that obviously play the competitions, so it's quite serious. But it was fascinating because usually it's like this. We skirt over. We, what did you start off with Monopoly and then you skirt over it? But we had a good 10-minute conversation about Monopoly, yeah. which was, which was kind of cool. So you did your mousetrap. You did your Monopoly. Mm-hmm. Was that... Are you like everybody else that you kind of put board games to one side and then pick them up again kind of later on or how did it work Uh, i guess it was like that i think it was university where i started to realize that there were all these interesting board games out there because you sort of think and i think this is still what the general population thinks that um board games are monopoly mousetrap Mm, cluedo yeah and they're all kind of they're fine. Or cards Against Humanity it's... seems to be kind of one that I see cropping up. You know, for, I ask people, you play board games? They go, yeah, play that Cards Against Humanity. That's edgy, isn't it? And you're like, oh, if mm. only you knew. If only you knew. Yeah. There are so many games that work on the same principle as Cards Against Humanity, but actually, I mean, Cards Against Humanity doesn't really reward you for being clever or funny. It rewards you for putting down the rudest card. And- yeah. If you're playing with the right group of people, then you can take out that element of it, but yeah. it very rarely happens. And I, I've i played with so many groups of people that kind of gleefully say things. All right. Like you put down a card and you're like, oh no, that's naughty. Mm. But they'll take it one step further where they start engaging with the meanness of it all. Mm. And you're sort of like, oh, no, this is just encouraging that. I don't want that. That makes me feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I generally prefer games that sort of engage you in a more role-playing way. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, like tabletop RPGs, obviously. Oh, have you played a, um, played a few of them, then? Yeah, only a couple. Uh, I, I've had two Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. I haven't completed them. Well, that's fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm sort of midway through one. And I've played Deadlands, which is a sort of western supernatural kind of zombies and werewolves and That's, cowboys it's amazing that sounds pretty cool because colin's always it's going fun. on at me colin the wonderful colin yeah. who's taking a week off he said i did a mm-hmm. bumper episode for you last time i'm not i'm going to take a break now so he's he's that's why he's not here um but he's uh he's always on at me for not picking up an rpg and, and getting involved because it's one of the things that i've just kind of not touched because i'm always worried that i would get far too much into the character and I would overact, and then oh hello, that's what I do. <laughs> you know, and then I'd be stuck. Or oh, there'd be nothing worse than what you would do is you would start off and you'd say, "Okay, I need to give my character an accent." So I'd go for like oh. something daft, 
you know. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I, well, I go for something difficult. I obviously wouldn't go for the typical, all right, all right, how's it going? I'm a dwarf. You know, I'd be going for something <laughs> stupid, which I couldn't maintain yeah. all the way through. Um, so I, I think that's my that's my worry. Colin's still trying to persuade me to get involved in a in a in an RPG, oh, but we'll should. see what happens. It's one of these things yeah. we got to touch on. You got to, the trouble with RPGs is you got to wait until somebody's starting up a campaign, and you also need to commit quite a lot of time to it. You know, yeah. But it's something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, did you get involved? I mean, you've uh, let's looking at the show notes because we've got show notes, <laughs> which is <laughs> always good. Carcassonne, which I've actually managed to yes. pronounce for the first time. Um. One of the things that we do at We're Not Wizards is we don't assume that people have former knowledge because there's a tendency for people to say, oh yeah, it's Carcassonne because that's that and folk, they expect people to know. So when did you start playing it? When did you, Was it a university you got exposed to, to its um, wonders? No, it was uh, relatively recently, probably in the last two years. All right. uh, I started playing it on iPad. It is an incredible game on iPad. Yes. I think better than the physical version. Yes. Um, and it's. I think it is the perfect uh, sort of gateway board game for people who've played the usual Monopoly and Scrabble and Cluedo. And you know, they they understand the the rules of board games, but they don't understand how good they can be. Yes. So. It's one of those ones where you lay down tiles. You take it in turns. Uh -huh. You lay down tiles. Uh, and the aim of the game is to get as many points as possible. You get points for building roads, yes. building cities, yes. building fields. Is that everything? I think so. <laughs> yes. And there's monasteries, which you, you get points for surrounding them with tiles. And each tile has like a different configuration of, of road and city. So it becomes a game of... And I think it's brilliant with two players as well because it becomes this game of trying to build your own cities and roads and trying to screw over everyone else by putting a road where they don't want a road and being like, what are you going to do about it? Exactly. Because um, you put your, trying to steal you put your characters down you either put them kind of like standing up, which means you kind of own it outright, or it's almost if somebody yeah. owns the area, you can have your guy kind of lying down. It's kind of like, well, I'm going to get a couple of points. I, I've yeah. played it myself on mobile myself, so... But I've not, um, I've not played it on the physical version yet, and it's one of these games that kind of passes you by. Because if people say, "Oh, let's play," you know, "Let's play Carcassonne," folk are like, "Oh, oh, I've played that so many times, I don't, I can't really be bothered playing it now." But it's such, as you say, it's such a, such a good game. Have you been playing it a yeah. lot then? I mean, is this is this one of your staples? Um... If it's available, yeah, I bought it on iPad quite recently, mm. and, and now I don't have anyone to play with. Um... <laughs> Which is a shame, is. Uh, but I just think it's so simple to pick up, mm. and I tend to play without fields. Right. Okay. I, I find the fields bit kind of tedious, especially in the physical version, because mm. you have to actually count. Whereas on the app, it's um, it all counts for you, so it's okay. But uh, yeah, I think fields are boring. Yeah. So I play without them, and apparently that's not standard. <laughs> Uh, well, there's so many expansions yeah. <laughs> for it now. I mean, it's one of these games that, in order to keep people playing that were, were have been playing it and have been used to it, there's kind of different expansions that can come out to it. So you can buy yes. the you can buy the core game, and then there's a there's a castles expansion, and then there's a I think there's a waterways and rivers expansion. So you can have yes. you can have like the base set, and then you can go and expand and and expand and and expand and to kind of give it a yeah. bit of replayability. And you can yeah. you can pick it up for really really cheap. I mean, I think it's one yes, of, especially yeah. the app. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's a good thing if you've got an iPad or even if you've got a, I had it on the the phone, and it's still you've got AI components, so you can set yourself up mm -hmm. against like another three or four people and still play along quite happily. Yeah, you know you don't have to um, you don't have to sneak around um, in the dark like your next game. I see your spy. <laughs> Do you like the segue? Yes. There you go. <laughs> um, Spyfall. Now I yes. I've heard about it, but I've never I've never actually played it. So I had a little look at it. I had a little look at it today, and um, it reminds me a little bit of Code Names. But um, mm -hmm. we'll put obviously a link. We'll put some information in the in the show notes itself. But 
tell us good people who are listening and all the new people who'll be listening tonight. Hello, all the new people who will be okay. listening. Um, tell us a little bit about Spyfall. What is that about? So I have only played Spyfall a handful of times, but every time I have really enjoyed it. It's one of those role-playing games mm. that I said I liked. Mm. Um, the central concept is that there's a little bag and it's weirdly packaged. It's it's full of like tiny Ziploc bags and you're like, this looks really cheap, mm. but it's it's just the best way of doing it. Uh, and each one has, I think, like nine cards in it or something, maybe eight. Mm. One of them is a spy. Right. And the rest of them all have the same location on, but everyone has a different job. So take, for example, everyone is on a space station. Right. And let's say there are six of you playing. Mm -hmm. One of those people will be the spy. And so they'll receive a spy card. Everyone else will receive a location card with a job on it. And the way it works is you go around the circle asking each other questions about your job, the location, or just the weather if you want to. And you have to figure out in, I think, two or three rounds, who is the spy. So what you want to do is you want to ask questions that are vague enough that it doesn't give away the location to the spy, but specific enough ah, right. that they can only answer correctly. So you're on a space station in this example. Okay, I'm on a space station. So you say, you're, you're legitimately on the space station, but someone else is the spy. So you say to someone, uh -huh. oh, should we open a window? All ah, right. If they're on the space station, they'll go, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Right? But... If you ask the spy, they might say, yeah, sure. I hear, I hear the weather's nice outside. And you'll be like, oh, really? Oh, right, okay. But you keep quiet about it <laughs> because everyone else will know they're on the space station. Everyone else will be like, obviously, that person's a spy. Yeah. Um, and it's really difficult to think of a question that does that. So a couple of times I've been, for example, in a fairground. And the other thing that catches you out is the jobs. So let's say you're working in a fairground and you're the guy who fixes the rides. Yes. And you ask someone else, like, uh, do you like working here? And they'll give back a question that's sort of really vague, or an answer that's really vague. And you're like, are they the spy? And then it turns out, no, they're just a visitor. Yeah. So they can't really answer the question properly. And they're not wanting to they want to be equally as ambiguous because they don't want to give yeah. location away at the same time. There's exactly there's a it smacks a little bit of code names where you kind of mm -hmm. want to give the clues away, give the one you know, give your clues so people will know where they've got to go and which words they want to pick as well. Um so it's kind of yeah. interesting that. Um is there how many I mean how many different kind of places is there? Is there quite a few different places? Yes, uh, I'm trying to remember. There's at least twenty, I think. Uh, so you have this in the in the manual. It has a list of every single place and a little picture of each place. Yeah. So one of the rules is, whether you're the spy or not, on your turn, uh -huh. you get to have the map in front of you. All right. Okay. Because it means that everyone, like you, you don't want to catch out the spy by seeing them look at the map. No. Right. No. Because that's boring. Um, so the rule is that everyone has to look at the map. And you're also trying to figure out, it's a bit like code names in that you're trying to figure out how to not make it look like you're talking about somewhere else. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah. 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 Do you, so like, did you there's a couple of places like, uh, oh, it easy, it easy. it's, you don't really win. That's the only thing that the end game is a, bit anticlimactic in that if you're the spy you win or you lose everyone else just kind of doesn't lose right okay yeah okay but it still sounds like fun yeah. is it i mean it sounds like you can get a group of i mean is it kind of like an entry level game could you get anybody together and play it and just say okay is it quite easy to explain i take it must have i mean when you first played it was it quite easy to pick up or was it one of these things where it's like oh i've got to learn this rule and this rule and this rule or was it quite yeah. simple it's not that there's a lot of rules to learn. It's that it's a bit confusing because you have to say to someone, right, if you're the spy, mm. you need to answer a question vaguely. If you're not the spy, 
you need to ask the question vaguely. Mm. And everyone's like, I don't understand. Why can't I just say, hey, are you on a space station? And it's like, because then everyone will know. <laughs> <laughs> and so every time I've played with a new group of people, someone has done something like that. Yeah. And we have to be like, okay, no, start again, start oh. again. You've got it wrong. And that's a bit frustrating. And also, I think a lot of people really don't enjoy the role playing because you're playing a role that I'm not really allowed to talk about anything. And some people find that a bit dull. So yeah. I've had trouble getting people to really enjoy it after a couple of rounds. Uh-huh. But I really like it. With the right group of people, it's really good. Yeah, no, it sounds good. I mean, it's what I think of what I've seen on the on their website. It's crypt, I think it's cryptozoic games that do mm-hmm. it. Um, and they've said they're doing a Spyfall 2, which I think they're kind of... Um, that's going to be out quite soon. I don't know if that's going to be a, if that's going to be a Kickstarter job or if they're just going to be mm. releasing it as a as a direct sequel. Is it quite expensive? I mean, is it replayable? Would you go back again and again and again and kind of replay it and enjoy it that way? Do you think? Yes, I think there's an interesting element in in replaying it, especially with the same group of people, mm. in that you'll start to memorize the locations mm. and then you'll have to make the questions even more difficult Mm -hmm. because you know the spy can probably guess yeah okay yeah so i i've never played it like that much so i can't really say for sure Mm. i think it's definitely replayable yeah all right cool 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 good (laughs) so spyfall worthwhile yeah yeah definitely worthwhile picking up is there any i mean um any games that you've seen around at the moment um that you said, oh, that would be worthwhile. I know obviously you'll not be directly, you'll be involved in the video game side of things a lot more than you're involved in writing for The Guardian and stuff like that, which is <laughs> quite impressive. I'm just feeling quite, okay, a bit of awe. Um, um, anything you've looked at recently that you've said, yes. maybe mm, that may be interesting to play. So I really like i've got three i hope that's all right that's um, no that's fine no no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, i i thought i didn't really enjoy love letter hmm. and then i played it a lot while i was out in sweden ah, and this i actually really do like it it's it's one that you can play without really thinking too much yeah. and it's just like a sort of nice passing the time kind of game was this when you were out and... filming with a game company yeah, I was I was covering a bunch of game developers making games in Sweden, and we played a bunch of board games. You said it said um, it was like summer camp, basically. It was, <laughs> yeah. And one of the other ones I'm going to mention is also from that. Uh, it's a game called Time Barons. All right. Okay. Now it's relatively hard to get hold of because it had quite a limited run, but uh, the it's designed by one of the guys who made Spelunky, the video game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's it's very good. Uh, it's ah, oh, I just like it. Um, it's a card-based game, uh-huh. so it's all about. Um, there are four ages, and you can advance through the ages and get better cards. Yeah. But you have a limited number of actions per turn, and your actions are used to play cards, do actions against the other player, right. and also advance to the next stage. So you have to sort of there's a strategy element to it where yeah, you have okay. to figure out what you're going to spend your actions on. Mm. Um, and it's excellent. But like I say, very hard to get hold of. Uh, and the last game is a game I played recently, uh-huh. uh, which is a bit problematic. Uh, it's called Secret Hitler. So <sighs> Yes, I've, yeah. I've seen, I've seen this because um, it came out on, it came out on Kickstarter and I know a couple mm-hmm. of friends that actually backed it and, they came when they got their Kickstarter reward. They got one of the higher tiers, so it came in a lovely kind of wooden, finished box. And they went, "Look at the finish." I was like, "Yeah, but it's Secret Hitler, isn't it?" <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, but look at the finish." So it was a nice. So what's what's that about? What's made you kind of pique your interest in that? Um, I was I was just hanging out uh in a bar that has a bunch of board games. All right, okay, and. A group of people that I'd never met before said, hey, do you want to play a board game? And I was like, yeah, hello, new friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they were like, it's called Secret Hitler. And what? interestingly, this this particular 
board game session was being hosted by this like very smooth voiced Canadian guy. Uh -huh. And so I was like, just like, yeah, okay, whatever you say, <laughs> let's do this. Um, and so he was just sort of like, yeah, Secret Hitler is this game. And I was like, mm -hmm, okay. Um, <laughs> and... Were you just like, well, you can say anything you want as long as you keep talking. <laughs> Do you have oh, any God, anything other? Do you have a, you know, do you have a silently tripping maybe Mussolini under there? Um, is the, <laughs> you know, um, I'm a anyway. anxious Gorbachev. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> what? So he was like, yeah. So basically, the concept of this game. Imagine this in a Canadian accent. I'm not doing it, but yeah. Uh, and one of you is Hitler. And a bunch of other people are fascists. And I was like, if anyone else, if like a British person was telling me this, I'd be like, this sounds terrible. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Uh, and there are all these like wooden things. <laughs> like it's a beautiful game. The cards are really nice. They're like yeah. embossed with all this like silver stuff. Yeah. And you get these little um, like wooden plaques that say whether you're like the president or the chancellor. Um, and you get these little cards that say whether you're a fascist or a, I think a liberal or Hitler. And... It's it's a bit like uh, what is it the resistance where you have to pass a certain number yeah. of missions. Yeah, people putting their points but... and then you add it up at the end. And if you you've yeah. got the choice of kind of like helping people fail the mission or mm -hmm. you know if you're the betrayer, you know kind of you know, yeah as I say if helping people kind of fail the mission or letting everybody kind of pass it. He sounds like a guy who got his he got his pledge <laughs> and he was like, mm -hmm. I need to play this. <laughs> Yeah. I need to play this, eh? I gotta get out there, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Um... <laughs> it's the best Canadian accent I can do. That would be the accent oh, I would sad. do is if we were starting to play an RPG. I'd say yeah. my character's Canadian, and then I would be absolutely okay. stuck forever. So I mean, that's not very fantasy, is it? Well, you don't know. I mean, for some reason, <laughs> they have dwarfs with Scottish accents. I mean, yeah, but that I don't know. That seems kind of fantasy. We're not, anyway, thanks, yeah, right. Okay. So, Secret Hitler Cheers for that. is a, a great game with a great system. Mm. It looks beautiful. Mm. I just I wish they hadn't picked Hitler because it just gives it this whole feeling of like ickiness where it's like, mm, this is a real person that did a lot of really awful stuff. Mm. And it feels a bit weird to be kind of playing a silly board game about it. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people have issues with it. It just. It just seems unnecessarily, like, edgy. Yeah. And it's by the guys who did Cards Against Humanity. So ah, right, okay. It's, but, it's yeah. understandable. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, like I, I personally am, like, fine, okay, whatever, but... Did you have, did you, did you feel, did you feel a little bit awkward, kind of, did you enjoy playing it? I mean, that was the thing. I really did. Right, okay. Um, There's just, like... I just find it a bit weird that, I don't know, I guess it's a marketing thing to be like, it's a game about Hitler, and then it generates a lot of publicity, mm, and it's like... Yeah, well... You should have just let the game speak for itself, I don't know, because it is so beautiful, I really can't overstate how lovely it is. It's a very well-made game. They clearly know what they're doing. Well, I mean, so, yeah. <clears throat> one of the things we when we talk about Kickstarter is that it's about getting your name out there. And one yeah. of the ways you either get your name out there is you have a marketing machine like mm -hmm. Cool Mini or not or Mantic or guys like that that know how to get the word out or you have to do something a bit, you know, different. I mean, Exploding Kittens mm. was an example of something which folk went, oh, what's that all about? What could that be? You know, that yeah. looks really, really interesting. What could that be? And um, that kind of got, I mean, that went on to be funded to the moon and back. I think it was one of the highest funded kind of games on, on Kickstarter itself. Yeah. Is there one of the games you mentioned um, let me just see. So should uh, you, people will be getting their pledges now. It'll probably go to retail and it'll sell lots and lots of copies probably. You have mentioned this is the show notes <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm not. Sh I'm not. Uh, no shame about talking about the show notes because it keeps me right because I'm old. Um, fun employed. Oh, I, I'm sitting next to a copy of it right now. Yes, I haven't played it. Yeah, I, haven't played it. <laughs> I haven't played it. I've owned it for almost a year now. So you've and it's 
look at it it's so cute um i mean you can't look at it this is a podcast uh well, we could put photos yeah. up and stuff like that but so have you got a pile of shame already then is this what you're saying i know i know yeah i have um yeah, so I got it for Christmas last year. Yeah, I wanted to back it on Kickstarter because I read about it and I was like, well, that sounds amazing. It's, again, another role-playing one. Yeah. Uh, it's similar to Cards Against Humanity yeah. in that uh, you have cards. <laughs> it's sort of, I haven't played it, so I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm just going to look at the rules and then I'll be able to. No, it's fine. No, okay. no, 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 no. It's fine, it's right. fine, it's fine, it's fine. From what I, from what I read about it, Yes. Is that you've got jobs, but then you make up CVs and you make up your yes. CVs and you make them as interesting as possible. And then yeah. people kind of vote on the CVs and the person that gets the best brilliant CV is the person that gets the job. Yeah. So you get given a bunch of qualification cards. Yeah. And the examples it says here uh, are you have a British accent, uh-huh. you have nothing left to lose. You have an uncontrollable libido, and you have the antidote. Oh. And then they turn over a job, and for example, here it says secret agent. So you then have to go into an interview. I think it's a limited time interview, yeah. so that it doesn't go on forever. Uh, but at some point in that interview, you need to play those cards. So you'll start off and you'll be like, oh, hello, play British accent. <laughs> and then you have to convince them that those qualifications that you have make you the best person for that role so nothing left to lose would be like if i die it's fine you can keep all my stuff i don't have that much stuff but you can have it and then the antidote you'd be like well you know if someone poisons me i can deal with it myself because i've got the antidote i don't know how uncontrollable libido would i guess Mm, james bond possibly uh yeah and like the trick is that you have to make people laugh and that's why I like role playing games because they're just about making people laugh, and that's what I like doing. So, <laughs> so haven't you? Yeah. Have, have you not dragged Holly along for this then? No, I I should take it to her house at some point. I mean, we play Dungeons and Dragons together, so I know she hmm. enjoys that kind of thing. All right, she should have been yeah. here tonight, then, shouldn't she? I mean, Colin, uh... Colin is currently out <laughs> running up and down the street, enjoying the rain. Because that's what he likes yeah. to do now that it's getting dark. He has some glow sticks tied to him so he can, <laughs> so he doesn't get hit by the traffic. But he's enjoying himself, oh. so I just let him run yeah. free. But you know, Nielsen, where are you? She's in New York right now. Oh right, okay. <laughs> we should have got, should have got her on Skype and just did a Dungeons and Dragonsy yeah. type thing. <laughs> She's busy having a great time. I'm sure she is. Without me. Oh well, that's not good. We need to get that. We need to get that sorted out, basically. Yeah. Anything else that you've seen in Kickstarter or is Kickstarter something that you kind of are aware of but don't really bother kind of looking at? Um, I don't really bother. That's fine. At. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't I see if you're because... if you're not in the scene, then there's no point in looking at it, and you don't you'll probably not get kind of little tweets about it like I do and stuff like that. So you know, yeah. and I'm not going to push you to just make up stuff. <laughs> For the sake sake of it, Kickstarter game, um, I don't know, Madame Caramel's Kickstarter game. Oh goodness! What would that, that be? That would be fun. What would that be? I should give her a call. Be like, hey, Madame Caramel. I don't know why I'd call her for short. <laughs> I don't know how you shortened Madame Caramel. <laughs> what kind of game would yeah. it be? Would that be a hidden? That would be a hidden movement game, possibly, or um, I don't. I- I think it would be like um like a point and click adventure <laughs> but but a, a board game um yeah no it would it would it would be cluedo but with sex toys <laughs> no. <laughs> no no yeah probably no. it would be it would no. be yeah it would be let's not think about no, it would be on a round it would be on a round board um with a yeah. with a padded dice box basically which oh, would be fine um <laughs> <laughs> Right. Cool. Let's yeah. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> One of the things <laughs> that we did, you know, let's move on from. Yeah, I'm not looking yeah. at anything on Kickstarter at the moment. No. Because, well, it's Christmas coming up, and oh yeah. So we look out and we we give a shout out to a couple of people that we know, but um, no, we, we're we're gonna have to keep. There's all gonna be a lot of stuff happening around Christmas that I need to keep my money for. We <laughs> put out a call. For all the good people out there 
in the Twitter sphere to give us some questions. And my goodness, did they not disappoint us. It is amazing yeah. what happens when you get a GMA winning nominated type person on the show <laughs> who has been who has graced herself across many of the newspapers of the land. So we've got questions. <laughs> We've got tons of questions here <laughs> that we're going to get through. And some of them, I'm just like, what? Because it's just going to blatantly show up that while we talk about board games, we're not exactly experts on them, but that's fine. So we're just going to go and hit these one at a time. Um, Nick Jones, Lane at 360, uh, he says yes. Um, Nick's, Nick always asks the same question. It's always yes with a question mark, and he's the best. Oh. Uh, Nick's a big friend of the show. He's we love him. We've got Craig Crowing, C R zero W I N G. He says, "Can I request a doodle from you both that's board game related instead, instead of asking that a does question?" Not work on a podcast. Well, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Re- yeah. I've done one. <gasps> what? No. Yes I, <laughs> yes, I did. Um, okay. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm just gonna take a photo of it now and put it out there. So I'm gonna just do that. What do I need to do one? No, it's okay. Oh, okay. You can, of course you can. <laughs> yeah. Just What 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 do, what what am I drawing? <laughs> it's a board it's one of the doodles. It's one of the doodles, it's the board game doodle thing. Okay. So I am oh, I don't know. So I am I have drawn um, Craig as a meeple being attacked by resource cubes. <laughs> Split all okay. cubes. So I will, I'm going to just you know, just cut this okay. down a bit. Press well, my apply. Pen's not working, so. <sighs> Stupid pen. Sort your pen out. This is this is live. There we go. This is live. Here we go. Wait. Here we go. So uh, I'm going to draw. Ooh. Uh, this one has a bit of background. Do you want to know my my background? Yes, do this. Yeah. So I had the Cluedo video game. All right. Okay. Uh, and that meant uh, that all the little pieces were actual like animated characters. All right. Okay. And so I tried to turn that into an actual story where Miss Scarlet and Reverend Green. We're like having an affair, <laughs> and so I'd like always move their characters to stand uh, next to each other, and I'd be like, "Oh my goodness, which one of them's the murderer?" <laughs> just... <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw that. Um, you keep doing. And then, yeah, when when I played it in real life, it's much less exciting because they're just like little they're little wooden things. Yeah, they're not exciting at all. Shaped. And Cluedo itself's things. quite boring as well. It's one of these things that kind of needs a little bit of a revamp, and I don't think anybody's kind of bothered kind of making a revamp at all. No? Are they not similar There's kind of similar games. I mean, the closest one that I think is um, I've heard is um, Mysterium, which is quite close. Everyone keeps telling me about that. Which, I haven't um, played it yet. Well, um, it's fantastic. It's kind of like um, It's kind of like the murders happened, and then you've got to gather clues. And you gather clues based on the pictures, and there's a basically one of the players plays the ghost of the dead person, and oh, you wow. are you are given clues in the form of pictures, um, yeah, and you have to guess basically based on based on the pictures. You have to guess like a location, you have to guess the person, you have to guess the mm-hmm. murder weapon, and it's fantastic. It's brilliant. It's what it's a very very easy game to pick up, and it's also kind of an excellent kind of gateway game as well. We spoke about it. Um, we spoke about it probably in our second or third episode. So, um, and we had an absolute blast. But apparently, I didn't, according to Colin. Um, <laughs> moving on, Bad Wild or Tino at Bad Wild has asked best board games for Halloween. So, um. Ooh. I have actually said I put Mysterium down on that because it is a board game that's ghosts and psychics yeah. and murder. So that's a good game to get involved. <laughs> um, Arkham Horror 
which speaks for itself. It's Arkham, it's horror, it's pretty much HP Lovecraft. Um, <laughs> One Night a Werewolf, which is oh, yeah. um, which is a game where you kind of guess who's going to be the werewolf. Um, Dead of Winter, which is kind of zombies, and there's a lot of stress and a lot of tension, so that's quite cool. And um, Letters from Whitechapel, which is about Jack the Ripper. Um, yes, and it's fantastic. It's a hidden movement game where people play... Somebody plays the cops, and the other person plays Jack the Ripper trying to get away from his murders. So it is really, oh really, really good fun. <laughs> and there's the picture. Oh, there you go. You've actually it's coloured in as well. <laughs> That's quite. I did. That's quite. I've got loads of crayons, so I thought I'd use them. <laughs> That's quite impressive. So, um, yeah. There you go, Craig. I hopefully you're happy with that. That is like kind of drawing as you wait, which is kind of quite impressive. Um, yeah. So that was Bad Wild. Also, there's your chan- your standard kind of zombie games. So you've got your zombie sides and and games like that. You could probably play Spyfall kind of dressed up as characters. I guess if you wanted Ooh. to for Halloween, um, yeah. I, I think I've mentioned everything. So thank you very much for that question. Um, next, uh, Ben Diesel, who is minute five oh seven two, has asked, "Can you recommend any good one or two player board games?" Now we actually had the same question or a similar question on our last episode, so you can you can listen back to that. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force them to do that. I'm gonna. Maybe answer the question. A couple of games that would be worthwhile looking at. Um, the Oni Rim, which is a matching number, beautiful little card game. Um, Sons Ali, um, which is another kind of little solitaire war game. Um, Mage Knight, but that's quite expensive. And Colin also talked about the Coin series of games. He spoke about one called Flame on the Lake. See, these are all kind of uh, good, kind of one-player games. Two-player games. Um, what do you think, Kate? Well, I said Carcassonne is a great yeah, two-player game. Yes. I stick by that. Yes. Um, what else? Fun and play <laughs> could be good fun, potentially. I mean, I don't know. I haven't played it. Um... Well, you need to play it and then you need to kind of let us know. <laughs> There's yeah. tons of two-player games out there. It depends if you want kind of like cards or if you kind of want little miniature games. Because if you want your little miniature games and you've got your little kind of your X-wings and Star Wars Armada, which is planes flying, uh, spaceships flying off against each other. We've spoken about in previous episodes games like Rivet Wars, which is a little army game, steampunky type game. We've spoke about Dungeon Saga, which you spoke about in the last last episode. Um. But there's card games as well. Um, Kate, you've probably heard of Netrunner. I think everybody's heard of yeah. Netrunner. That's a, it looks hard. It's really... It's weird because it's like an asymmetrical card game. So you yeah. get... Well, it's not just the case of like... It's not just a case of like normal cards. It's like, well, I'm going to play my five. And it's like, well, I'm going to play my six. I'm going to play my seven. It's kind of like, I'm going to play my five. Mm. Yes, well, I'm going to play my you know, my set of apples and the set of apples. (laughs) So it's asymmetrical. So you've got somebody that's playing a hacker and the other person that's playing a corporation. And the idea is that you're meant to hack the mainframe network in order to score points. It can be very, very complicated. It's got a lot of expansions on it as well, and it's, it's good fun. But these are card games. I mean, we Dice Masters, which is a nice little dice and card game and also um, one of my favourites is a game called Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born which are all kind of little little card Mm -hmm. games the thing is there's so many kind of games which try and give you there's plenty Mr Diesel there's tons I mean if you go into a if you go into a a, a little board game shop and chuck a chuck a brick you'll probably get chucked out but you'll probably (laughs) hit a two player um, or a single player card game um, because that's the fantastic thing about board games. They are, you know, um, you can play it with a friend, which is quite good. We have got who else? Right. Yes, I thought he'd turn up somewhere. Mister Jeremy Greer, who is the worst, has said, "How did you convince a nice person to be on your podcast?" Oh, um, is that me? Is that I meant to be me? I think so. <laughs> um, 
The answer is because they wouldn't go in your one. Quite simply. No, Jeremy is a good good friend of the show and he um he runs a podcast which is all about um Dark Souls called uh, Don't Give Up Skeleton. So what he does is people that have played Dark Souls, he interviews them and uh, talks to them about their experiences on Dark Souls. So he's a good man. He is the worst. I mean we like him, but he's a he's just a terrible person. But um anybody that does have an inkling for Dark Souls, they should really check out because he's got some really, really interesting interviews kinda going on. Um, on the show so <clears throat> he's still not convinced me to go on his show though so he's obviously not managed to convince this nice person here um na nakala n-a-h-k-a-l-a sorry if i don't pronounce your name correctly what are your best board game memories what do you sound um, yeah <laughs> i don't know uh I mean, it's a relatively recent memory, but uh, we had a tournament for Time Barons, which is the game I mentioned earlier, oh. uh, while we were in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't win, uh-huh. but I was okay with not winning because it turned into a very intense... Uh, we, we live-streamed it on Twitch, and there were like name badges, and there was a crowd, and there was entrance music, and it all got a little bit too much and i was like oh god there's too much pressure i don't want to win i'm just going to gracefully lose <laughs> which i did um i think in the quarterfinals quarterfinals really? semifinals no, i don't remember how far i got but uh the atmosphere was great especially once you weren't playing anymore you mm. could sort of just you turned up for the i think they called it the entrance ceremony and uh, they high fived everyone, and that was great. And yeah, it was it was lovely. That was that's a nice memory. You said you yeah. you um when you mentioned it on the your recent podcast um well the one I listened the one I listened to was you you kind of equated it to some kind of summer camp. Yeah, it it was exactly like that. It was a bunch of people turn up. They're all quite nervous because they don't think they don't know if they're going to make friends. Yeah. Uh, and then. You sort of spend the first couple of weeks being like, oh, uh, hi, hello, I'm really nervous and awkward. And then you sort of have a few drinks. Maybe that's not like a summer camp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get to know each other. And you spend... <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, not any summer camps I've been to. No. Oh, no, that's a lie, definitely. Yes, I've, drink, I've drunk at summer camps. <laughs> um, I've been cool. But you, you sort of, you do all these magical things like, going for walks and sitting on mountains and watching the stars and you just sort of bond and you do activities together and you spend all your time together and you go swimming in the lake and it's magical and wonderful and <sighs> yeah you kind of and then when you leave you're like i miss everyone <laughs> you sound like you want to still be there i do i mean as long as everyone else was still there there's i want there's so much pining <laughs> um Mine, my best board game memories, I think it's been, um, do you know what, I think there's a collection of memories as my kids have kind of not been playing Monopoly but have been getting involved in the the games that I played. So I mentioned they played Pandemic but we've played, Mm. we've played games together like Rampage which is kind of like a, it is basically dinosaurs going around a city kind of, (laughs) um, destroying buildings and eating people and it's generally good fun and it's a lot it's a lot of good fun um yeah best the best memories are knowing or letting the, yeah having my two eldest kind of playing games with them and letting them kind of understand that there's more more than just the basic monopolies and stuff like that so if they were having this conversation and maybe 15, 20 years time and they were asked the same question what was your kind of board game memories about they'd be like oh yeah we played everything I mean they play Pandemic for goodness sake you know <laughs> such a such a good dad that I am um, yeah thank, thanks for that Nicola. Um just quick news flash Craig has come back and said I love both of your faces Oh. I didn't realise he knew I was two faced um <laughs> Joshua <laughs> Joshua Garrity, um, combine hunter. The um, he's a fabulous guy. It's Joshua. We like him a lot. He does um, he does was it cane and rinse? He does a lot of I think. Yeah. yeah um, I find myself getting mentally exhausted when playing board games. Any tips for dealing with this? Um, depends what you're playing, Joshua. 
he needs like a training montage, like a Rocky one, where maybe he starts off with like say Love Letter, mm-hmm. and then he moves up through Love Letter. Maybe he does for Skyfall and Code Names, and then he moves up from Skyfall and Code Names to. You could have different videos on kind of chucking dice and then failing chucking dice and then, you know, all that different stuff and then working way up to a full kind of Dungeons and Dragons role role playing game. So I think, Mm. Joshua, in fairness, I think you need to start small and work your way up. Remember, board games aren't just something fun. They're they're an endurance (laughs) test as well. Um, They're very serious. Very, very serious. (laughs) Look at my face. It's a face of seriousness. Um, Oh, yeah. I'd I'd be interested to know what what games he's playing that leaves him mentally exhausted. I mean, games like Dead of Winter, where there's stress involved, and Whitechapel, where there there is a little bit of stress involved. Yeah, I can imagine that. But um, I think you need to start small, Joshua, and work your way up. You know, then you can join the big league. But thank you for your question, um, Peter Allen at Rita Palin. Fantastic. <laughs> What makes a game great? I love competitive games, but games which spawn debate and conversation rock. Um, well, for you, okay, obviously this mm-hmm. being kind of, what, yeah, what what kind of gets you going? Oh, well, this is a good game. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this and what you're kind of looking out for. You said role playing the type of thing, don't you? Where you get to be different yeah. characters. Yes, that is basically what I like best. I like games that sort of give you a base set of rules and then go do whatever you want with them and then it becomes more about the experience between you and your friends rather than the the set experience that the game wants you to have yes yeah there's not there's nothing worse than somebody having to have the rules set right beside them having to constantly yeah. flick through a book saying no 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 wait 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 i've got to check this i've got to check this so i, I get yeah you're right again that makes the games great that you can sit there and you can go actually let him move five. <laughs> you can move five. It's fine. It's not going to break the game or anything like that. Yeah. Love competitive games, but games which spawn debate and conversation. Dead of Winter is really good for that stuff like that because you it's a co-op, cooperative survival game. So you have to decide, you know, are we going to spend, are we going to get some food? Are we going to get some medicine? Are we going to spend this on that? You also get a chance of a betrayer as well who's got to wreck things for people. It's kind of like resistance again where you get an option to face down, kind of deal resources into a pile and then you turn them over at the end to see if you've kind of passed the the necessary test. And it can lead to like miniature debates in the group if you get a good enough group and you get a chance to exile people out into the cold with the zombies. So that oh. that's kind of, you know, something that has a game that has maybe kind of real almost almost like game changing consequences for some people. I kinda like that. Anything yeah. that causes a bit of tension. I loved Whitechapel recently. Yeah. Which was fantastic. Now <laughs> lots of people pressing likes and stuff. Okay. Uh Arno de Bock Arno underscore de Bock he asks um, what do you think about the indie board game jam? Do you know what? Um. <laughs> it's f- as far as I'm aware, yeah. and I'm not going to say, "Oh, I know all about this," because I don't. I'm, I'm going to admit, I have, <laughs> you know, it's forty-eight hours. It occurs over a weekend. It occurs in Toronto. You basically get forty-eight hours over a weekend to create a game and then play a game. Um, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think um potentially gives people a springboard to um it'd be like anything it'd be like a writer's workshop or something like that you know you everybody sits around and says okay write 500 words of a beginning of a story and then we'll kind of build on it but um yeah it could be good would you do that do you think you could invent a game over a weekend i don't know i i've been told that i should have a go at it um mostly by the same people who think I should do a game jam, but I don't know if I have the base skills necessary for being creative in that kind of way. Like, I can do writing, yeah. I can doodle sometimes, uh, but a board game, I'd have no idea. If I worked with other people, I think I could do it. I think, yeah. John, when we had John Gilmore on the show, who, mm-hmm. he said that what he has is he generally has lots of white pieces of paper around him. 
<laughs> and what he does is he puts them down in piles and then just picks an idea at random and then sees you know basically sees if it sees if it kind of sticks um yeah. and okay. you know and plays around he says the biggest thing is play testing play testing and play testing yes. which is his thing yeah. but i think indie game jams if it gets somebody who's really interested a little bit more interested in designing games and that's fine because the good thing about board games is they seem to be going into a we said this a lot about a renaissance it's like you could probably search for i want a board game about penguins and there's board games about penguins or i want a board game well if you look at the subject matter you've got robert's robinson crusoe which i've seen you've got um HP Lovecraft games, you've got cooking games, you've got sewing games. There's a game that's out on Kickstarter that I looked at, which is about creating stained glass windows. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds lovely. And you, it's like translucent dice, and you, you, based on how you roll the dice, you place them on a grid and it makes different patterns. I think it's called. It's like pixel art. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's like it's called. Um, you don't get um, enough dice to create a pixel picture, but you do get a lovely looking mm. window, which is kind of cool. So yeah, okay. If it encourages creativity, Arno, we're we're, we're all for that. Are you for that? Mm -hmm. I'm for that. I'm for that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Andy Piddy, um, Andy's friend of the show. We love Andy. He's brilliant. He's potentially coming on the show actually in in the future. Um, he's in, he's part of Laps Gamer Radio, who do a very good show on um, video games. Um, and it's Andy Pedajeki. Um Chaos in the Old World is one of the most balanced games I've played. Which other games are perfectly balanced? Mm. <sighs> I think I'd say Love Letter is because yes. it's such a small game. Yes that it, it just it knows what it's doing and knows how to do it and it does so with only like uh what is it seven or eight yeah. types of cards yeah. and that's i think what makes it so good is that there's nothing unexpected or weird no. there there have been i've played a couple of games where you get trapped mm. um you can try and sort of bluff your way out of it but generally if someone knows what card you have and it's, say, the princess, and they have a card that can make you discard it. There's nothing you can It's do. fantastic. They've got the prince um, or something like yeah. that, then you're done. Or the guard's very yeah. good. But, yeah, I mean, it is another one that I've got. Do you know what? I carry that about with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> just in case. Hmm. Well, you know, if you're going about with the kids somewhere, you can sit in the car, you can get a quick game of it, and they love it. It was one of these games that said, this is how you play this, and they went, can we play it again? So I think we spent like a couple hours just playing it and then arguing and stuff like that. So it was quite, it was quite good fun. So it was all very good. Um, okay. Yes. Um, other games that are perfectly balanced. Um, there's a game that I don't play enough and really should play enough, which is Ashes. Ash, 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 I shall uh, learn it. <laughs> It's Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born by Played Hat Games and um, <clears throat> it's an asymmetrical guard card game where you fight off against um, other characters that have their own set of kind of magic spells they can use or they can summon other creatures and to help them. It's very, very similar to magic but there's kind of, I think there's about six or seven core sets but for some reason, no matter who you face off against, um, there's always some kind of way to win. There's all you know. It's never a case that there's going to be some um, there's going to be some character that's going to destroy kind of everybody else. So hmm. okay. <laughs> so um, yeah. So that's um, yeah. So that's that's a really 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 good fun game. Um, do you know what? I think that's <laughs> enough questions. Yeah. I don't think we need any more questions. Craig is saying he really likes both of our faces still, so he's I'm, I'm good. Craig's Craig's <laughs> a nice guy. I worked with Craig like yeah. years ago. He's a top bloke. We have a lot of time for Craig. Um part of the show normally what we do is we do shout outs. Um now as I say to everybody, I'm not gonna make you sit there and listen to me go on about um other places that I like, but maybe it's a time for you to tell us um, a little bit about what, you know, tell a bit about Toku, about what you're up to, anything that you want to promote? 
Just the floor is yours. Uh, I mean, you've mentioned Tokyo already. Yes. But that is my podcast. It's very good. Yes. It makes a lot of people laugh. It's, what more could you want? It's award, <laughs> it's award nominated. It's an award nominated podcast. I just got it. <laughs> About, God, I, a, I hope we win. It's a award nominated video game podcast. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, and we're better than Chat Very Good. Um, don't listen to them. Boo. Boo. <laughs> uh, what, <laughs> what and how can they find, um, how can you they can, find, how can they find Toppy Podcast? It's at Toppy underscore podcast on Twitter. Yeah. And if you want to follow me, I'm at How Not to Draw on mm. basically everything. Um, Instagram, uh, Twitter, mm. I don't think I have anything else. Um, I do a lot of things on Twitter. It's basically my main method of communication. I write blogs and put them on there. Mm. I share the pieces I've written for work and so on. Because you're a freelance, um, you're a freelance journalisty type person. I at the moment, am I? at the moment. I really hate calling myself that. Um, but yeah, it's not really much. Do you have I another do. name yes. for it? Could you invent another name? I I just want to be like. I mean, when I when I had like office jobs, I'd be like, "Hey, I'm a video game presenter or yeah. a video game uh, journalist," and like I prefer that. But then everyone's like, "Oh, who do you write for?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know, everywhere." Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I no. hate talking about being freelance because everyone's like, "Oh, isn't it hard?" And I'm like, "Yes, but like, stop saying that." <laughs> yeah. So, um, I like talking podcast. I'm a regular listener. Yay. Um. Yay. As you said, if you want to, if you want to uh, see Kate on the Twitters, you can find her at How Not to Draw, um, and Toku underscore Podcast. If you want to follow the podcast, both were worthwhile looking at because there are hours of entertainment to be found. Um, if you want to find us, then you can follow us. You can. We're on Twitter. We are not wizards. We're on Facebook. We are not wizards. You know, forward slash We are not wizards. You can email us magic at we are not wizards, but we just seem to be getting asked if now if we want to buy pills, which is all we seem to get. Um, oh. We're on Instagram forward slash we are not wizards. Um, I think that's about it, and we're on iTunes as well. You can, we've got a big long link which I read out for a joke sometimes, but I'm not doing it tonight because it takes about three and a half hours, and it would be rude. Um, I <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, um, thank you very much for coming on. Um, Thank you for having me. We, I know it's been, I've, 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 I just, you know, it's been good fun. Um, you know, and, and we've answered everybody's questions. And if people want to come back to us, they can at us and 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 and, and answer any questions that we've answered with any answers that they want to give us. But um, yeah. yeah. But thank again. No, thank you for coming on. Um, it's been been a lot of fun. Um, I had fun. Thank. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Um, <laughs> now remember, the main thing is. That we mm. are many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards? No, definitely not. <laughs> Go away, wizards! And uh, <laughs> so it's a goodbye from goodbye from Kate. Goodbye. And it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye with the police. They come for me. Oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs>